Hi and welcome again to the channel Newtown Naughty Boy. In this episode we will be continuing with a part two from a video that I took several months ago concerning chronographing your rifle. If you remember in the last part um, we talked about um, the ways in which you would chronograph your rifle or your pistol and we use these two devices here the Crombro and the Crony as our examples and I showed you how these two chronographs work. I then said that there would be a part two to follow and it's been some time since um, I've got around to doing that. This is quite an important um, video uh, and a demonstration of how uh, you would use the results from your chronograph exercise um, to ascertain the sweet spot of your rifle. So today I'm going to talk about regulated and unregulated PCP rifles and how you would use a chronograph to do some measurements to ascertain where the sweet spot is um, for you to shoot for your best results. So first let's talk about what a regulated gun is against what an unregulated gun is. So we're not talking here about the regulations in the UK concerning the amount of power that you can have on an air rifle before you need a firearm certificate. When we talk about a regulated gun we're talking about something completely different. So I'm first going to show you what a regulated gun looks like or, or how a regulator valve can be fitted to a gun to make it a regulated gun. This is my S, Air Arms S200. I've, what I've done here, I've slipped the stock slightly forward so that you can see the regulator. So the regulator here is this piece of silver aluminium, this device here that sits in between the hammer section of the gun here and the air tube of the S200. So it fits in between the two. So what a regulator actually does is it lowers the pressure of the reservoir to an ideal level before making it available to the valve itself. So the so it's the valve system in between the air cylinder and the internal hammer system of the gun. With a regulator fitted, your gun is likely to be more consistent. So what about an unregulated gun? How do, you, how do these operate and why should you be more mindful about the shots taken and the changes in velocity? So let's now have a look at my Air Arms S400 which is an unregulated gun. So this is my Air Arms 400 and it's, as I said before, it's not a regulated gun. Um, the air tube here is screwed into the action here and it's the action in here, the hammer, that uh, activates the valve that's directly um, connected into the actual air cylinder itself. So the air tube holds a significant high pressure and the internal hammer has to moderate an amount of air from this air tube. The air valve um, has a range of pressure from low to high. As long as the air that's supplied to it stays within that range, the gun shoots at a constant velocity well more or less anyway and it's that more or less that's a great concern to all air, gun and air gunners that shoot an unregulated gun therefore unless you actually chronograph your air gun you won't understand where this range of pressure is that gives you your constant velocity so what you do first is you fill your cylinder to its a maximum amount that it's allowed to take and usually this is detailed within the guns manual or usually it's actually stamped on the side of the air cylinder as to what pressure you can fill your cylinder to 
You then use a chronograph to take measurements of each shot using a pen and paper to mark, mark a column of let's say 1 to 80 and start noting down the feet per second for each shot you take. Every 10 shots you take, note down also the air pressure in your gun. Say for example you fill your gun to 190 bar and after 10 shots you take a look at the gauge and it reads 175. So you write down 175 next, down next to the 10th shot that you've made. OK, we know these gauges on the rifles are not necessarily accurate but that's not the issue here. All we are doing is assigning the reading against every 10 shots. Continue like this until the velocity starts to drop off rapidly. Say after 60, 70 or 80 shots, depending on your gun and actually how many shots you're likely to get out of the gun before it starts to drop off. Now we have a complete set of results to analyse. So now we need to feed these figures into a spreadsheet. But if you can't do that, don't worry, you can analyse the column of numbers anyway. A spreadsheet just makes it easier to look at. So now we're going to go indoors and I'm going to set up some figures on my computer from the results that I took from this S400 MPR. So we've come inside now and um, I've opened up an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, like I said before, really, um, if you can enter some numbers into a spreadsheet, it's not too difficult to do, but maybe just analysing your data will give you the same effect. Um, the only reason I'm really going to do this in a spreadsheet is so that I can actually draw a graph fairly easy and then this will demonstrate to you um, better the actual process of trying to analyze your the sweet spot for your particular rifle so um, I've entered in the data here these are the shots that I took starting at number one and going down obviously this is the fill pressure of the air tube that um, I had on my gun initially and this was the first reading on my chronograph of 761 feet per second so I continued like that second shot third shot and if we scroll down when I got to the tenth shot I actually took a reading uh, on my gun as to the air pressure now um, at that point the gun was doing 781 feet per second. Now you will notice that I've actually filled in um, the air pressure all the way down uh, shot 2, shot 3 etc etc. I actually didn't do that initially what I did was um, I knew what the pressure was at number 1 and I took a reading at number 10 and then I kind of filled in the gaps in between 190 and 10. Um, it was fairly easy to do because there isn't much change. There's only a, a 9, I think, between 190 to 181. So that gave me all the readings that I needed. And if we scroll down, I actually took, I think, 80 shots in the end. Uh, the last reading on my tank was 120 and the velocity was 769 so you could do this on a piece of paper anyway you could get some graph paper out and plot a graph it's these figures down here that we're interested in first so um, we're going to look at a graph um, from the data here in a minute but first I just want to show you um, what a bell curve looks like So I've, what I've done is I've just taken a piece of A4 sheet of paper and actually drawn on the paper what's something that's called a bell, a bell curve, B-E-L-L. -L -L. And when we look at the data in a minute from the shots that I've taken, um, there is some 
similarity but I wanted you to perhaps understand the structure of what a bell curve looks like. Um, a bell curve starts off with a point near zero and it raises up whatever you're measuring it raises up quite steeply to a point where there's a plateau at the top here the curve of the bell at the top and this curve maintains itself uh, for some time until it suddenly starts to gradually or suddenly drops off quite dramatically at the end at the curve of the bottom of the, of the bell here so if you think about it and when we look at the data you'll see this kind of bell curve um, shape arising from the data so let's now have a look at the graph that I plotted from the data from the spreadsheet okay so now I've got the graph up of the, from the data that I've just shown you so we start at this point here where the fill in the cylinder was 190 and the approximate velocity was about uh, 762 as you see as the shots were taken gradually uh, the velocity increased and it wavered around a little bit here and then it increased a little bit more until we got to here and at this point the shot started to stabilize and if you think about the bell curve that we've just looked at we had this period here of uncertainty where the air pressure in the cylinder was still settling down and then we have the top of our bell curve here where of course it's not a smooth curve but we're only talking here about maybe five six or seven feet per second difference in each shot across the top here and it continues along the top here until um, this point here when it starts to gradually tail off and obviously the cylinders are at about 130 here 120 the shots are low here so the I've I calculated for my gun that where I needed to fill the cylinder to was about 175 which was about this point here and then I've got some consistent shots right the way through until well about 50 shots here more than enough for an HFT competition with a few shots at the front end here to practice with as well now when I first saw this information I thought great what I could do is I could fill my gun to 190 here take the gun along to a competition use these shots here as practice shots and then when I was at the competition I would be in my nice sweet spot here and I would have consistent shots all the way through but no of course what was happening was I was taking my gun to the range filled at 190 I was getting some low shots from my rifle and then what I was doing was I was adjusting my scope because my shots were low I would adjust my scope to compensate for these low shots here when I got to the competition and I was within this range of velocities here of course my shots were going too high and I was missing the target so I was missing the point here what I need to do is fill my gun to as I've already said 175 use this area here as my practice to make sure that my gun is working correctly and then use the rest of this flat spot here of the curve of the bell curve to enter the competition and use these shots here and I've got more than enough to be able to do that now whilst I was analyzing this data I thought about the people that go hunting with an air rifle with a PCP air rifle that's unregulated now I know plenty of people that go out and do this and they don't tend to take very many shots at all so what are they doing are they filling their gun up 
to say 190 or the maximum amount for their particular gun they only tend to take about a dozen shots in a daytime hunting they may take a few practice shots but if I was to take my rifle out hunting um, and I was to fill my cylinder up to 190 all the shots that I would take during a day maybe the dozen or so shots that I would take would be erratic they would be all over the place um, and I would most likely be missing my target all of the time so again if you're a hunter you need to analyze and understand where the sweet spot is within your PCP and the only way that you can do this is by going through this exercise with a chronograph plotting or writing down the data as I've shown you um, right the way through the range and then analyzing this data to see where your sweet spot is so that's really all I've got to say about this um, it's quite important that you do this and if you go through this exercise I think um, you'll establish um, a better range of shots for your your particular gun and remember every gun is different every gun will have a different sweet spot but you just need to know where that sweet spot is and you need to know how many shots you've got within that sweet spot so that you can fill your gun up to the required pressure to take advantage of that consistent set of shots okay well thanks for watching this video today if you've got any comments please leave them behind um, I just love to hear your comments about what I've been talking about um, also please press the like button if you like this video if you found it useful that'd be great of course if you press the subscribe button then you'll be told of any further videos coming from me on all sorts of subjects to do with air rifle shooting that'd be great so um, I'll see you again soon on the next video so bye for now well if you've ever wondered where the name Newtown Naughty Boy comes from well you can learn a little bit more about that um, I did write a book last year and uh, quite recently I've had the book republished um, it's got a nice new cover on it it details uh, my story really uh, growing up uh, in the UK in a small town and uh, all the things that I got up to uh, during the 50s, 60s and 70s. There's quite a bit in there, there's some pictures, there's illustrations, there's a little bit of naughtiness, there's quite a bit of air gun shooting and shenanigans. There's stuff that will make you laugh in this book. It's a book you can order from Amazon, but also it's available on Kindle quite cheaply. So why not give it a go? It's a really good read, and then you can give me some feedback on it. Um, hope you enjoy. Give it a try.